Hi folks, Barry the Beer Guy here. Thought I would make a video today just showing uh, beer cans found in a wall, found in a remodeling project. One of the many ways I get beer cans, uh, or more unconventional ways other than going to shows, networking with coworkers, bugging people, uh, is through the internet and ads and occasionally, I mean it's kind of like kissing a toad and finding a prince, but uh, I had a guy Eric in Urbana, Iowa that found cans 25 years ago and kept them and his wife asked oh in December probably when they were cleaning out their house or uh, just putzing around what are you gonna do with these cans honey so somehow he found me we talked on the phone great guy and uh, he kept these all this time they're not worth a huge amount of money but it's really cool that he saved them and what happened years ago is the work crew probably downed a few, this may have been a big work crew or a heavy drinker, uh, but went to the store, went to the bar, liquor store, bought these and downed them while doing a project and then hid the evidence in the drywall or behind something to prevent the boss or his wife from finding the evidence. Well, the thing is about indoor cans like this is they're usually kept from moisture and humidity and it's kind of like a time capsule when they're found but you can see there is dirt and stuff on here and there is wear and they have been used the thing with these six pack containers is they've got these little tabs in here and usually people just destroy them ripping them apart to get the beer out well here's what was found in them are these type cans and they required a church key to get into. As you can see on the bottom, they punch them. You punch two to help the beer flow better. But these have got what they call vanity lids on the top. And they show these are four percentum of alcohol. It's kind of cool that they kept the lid intact, but uh, Eric found two of these six packs, another loose six pack. And what's cool here is if you ever want to date or find the era, I mean, not all cans and such will be like this to have clear-cut evidence but if you look on the bottom of this let me see if I put it the right way see those breweries listed at the uh, turn it over <laughs> here we go see those breweries listed up no I had it the right way listed on the bottom well hams wanted to go national so they bought breweries in Los Angeles San Francisco the former Gunther brewery out in Baltimore and then one in Houston and you see the one in Houston is not listed so that pinpoints these cans and six pack containers got a, got a big dent there to between 1953 or no 59 and 63 but I've got a friend in Omaha Bill owner of Infusion Brewing Little Bohemia Brew House other fine beer establishments that's an Omaha beer nut and when I sent him these cans and asked, Bill, when were these made? 1960 to 61. So that pinpoints this whole beer treasure trove of mine to one year, which is pretty cool. And I would bet if I asked Eric the uh, house that he uh, remodeled or found these in, they probably remodeled the bathroom or whatever room he found these in in that era. Pretty cool. So here, my video, not only educational, but what do you do when you find cans like this? A lot of people don't want to touch them, but you know what? They're beer cans. They're pretty durable. These two Schlitz cans that were found in there, these are toast. <clears throat> they have rust and humidity spotting, and these are probably worth, I don't know, a buck a piece. And all of these breweries made cans in pretty great quantities. Stores, Hams especially, and Schlitz, they were uh, pretty large breweries, and these cans are plentiful. I might, you know, that might be good for a donor lid. You could use this lid on another can if you really needed a flat top lid. But I wanted to show you these, the Hams cans, and the Stores cans. And now uh, what you do when you find cans like this, now check this out. I've even left this fine layer of dust on them. See that? But all you do, go get a sweat sock. <laughs> My wife rolls her eyes at some of the stuff that I use for rags. Uh, socks with holes in them, other clothing that you may wear underneath your clothing, if you get my drift. But watch what you do. All you do, usually, 
Well, yeah, that wipes off. And you can just use soap and water. And if you want to go the extra mile with these, you can use a car wax, you know? They're metal. Don't go nuts on it. Don't use an abrasive car wax. I usually use new finish. Or you've heard me rant and rave on about Flitz, this cleaner. And then if you want to go the extra mile, and again, don't go too nuts, but what I've got is an old flat sheet. This is a Blatz can, as you can see. But what I'll do to just shine up the rims a little bit and get that rust off them is wrap the tin sheet around the can like this, get it up snug. And what I'll do is get a fine steel wool. And now that you've got the can protected and won't wreck the paint or anything, but you pull out your steel wool and you just clean up the rims a little bit. You get that surface rust off make them nice and smooth again and it protects the can. Uh, you can use a piece of paper. I realize not everyone has a unrolled flat sheet around the house. But that is my lesson on wall found cans. And if you are watching this because you found cans, well, you've got to do some research to find out whether your cans have value or not. Of course, they'll probably have value if they're this old. If you found pull tab cans where they've got the removable top those aren't that old they're made in great quantity but these cans to have both the six pack container and the cans in them are I'll, I'll uh, clean them up and put them in there and the other key with these six packs if you have got cans check this out all right that are in it helped the bad cans if you're assembling a six pack what you do is put them in the interior the two middle cans no one's going to see those and then put your best shape cans facing outward sticking out of the six pack to just make a nice displayable six pack and a lot of times these are used in displays uh, i've seen them used in point of sale motion to play displays paul staniel Boy, you know what I need? Tongue loosener. Ham's point of sale displays. They always wanted to use empty cans because they didn't want the weight of a full six pack weighing down or leaking on the display. Uh, and I get a real kick out of finding these things intact. I've got a couple other Minnesota brands around here in my beer room, Schmidt, Glicks. Uh, so I hope you found this informative. I just thought I would do it while I had the cans and hadn't cleaned them up. I appreciate everyone that thinks these videos are cool. It makes my day to get an email saying I taught somebody or they were looking for this information. So that's why I'm sitting down here this morning before my family's up to go through this and teach you stuff about beer. I'm Barry the Beer Guy. Keep on collecting. Keep the passion. Don't forget the ham show in Medina, Minnesota in uh, mid-February. That's all. Hope you have a good weekend.